Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will present answers to the following quiz questions, which are related to the counter mode and the CBC mode. I assume you have already watched the counter mode and CBC mode videos. Let's get started. Is the counter mode secure against chosen plain text attacks? The answer is yes or true. Okay, so why is that? So in the case of chosen plain text attacks, the usual definition is that the attacker is presenting two plain text messages, say M0 and M1. Attacker picks M0 and M1. Okay, these are two messages. He submits this to a challenger. Okay, the challenger will select one of the messages randomly, either M0 or M1, and encrypt one of the messages and returns the cipher text back to the attacker. Okay, the attacker has to figure out whether the cipher text corresponds to M0 or M1. It turned out that that uh, distinction is difficult to make. Therefore, um, the counter mode is considered secure against chosen plain text attacks. Okay. There's a proof for that, but I'm not going to the formal proof. So this is just more of a theorem, uh, checking the foundation here. What about the next question? Is the CBC mode secure against chosen plain text attack, attack, CPA? The answer is yes, it is also secure. The reason is that if you look at the way um, the CBC mode works, is that is a unique random IV for every message. Therefore, it's difficult to distinguish whether the given ciphertext corresponds to M0 or M1, similar to the game that I just explained for the counter mode. Okay, let's move on to the next one. The counter value in counter mode need not be random. Okay, this is something some folks get it wrong in my class. It's important to have unique value for the counter for a given key but it need not be random. The counter need not be random, okay? As long as the counter is unique, there's no reason the counter has to be random. This is just because of the way the counter mode works. I can quickly show you the counter mode structure. We have already seen this. This is non-spaced counter. So there's a fixed nonce and then there's a counter that is incremented. That's perfectly fine. All right. This whole thing need not be random. You can start with zero, uh, you can make it one, you can make it two. The reason is that we directly send that counter value together with whatever nonce you are seeing here to the block cipher encryption algorithm. So it's going to give some random output here and, and that we encrypt by, oh, here is encryption. Um, that we encrypt by mixing it with plain text and you get the cipher text, okay? So this is the, the reason that um, the, the input value here need not be random. Okay, as long as it's unique, that's perfectly fine. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, so in CBC, it is not an issue if IV is predictable. Uh, that's false. We have already discussed that IV should not be predictable. In counter mode, both encryption and decryption functions use the same initial counter value. Okay, let's look at the counter mode again. Yeah, you see here, the in, both in, uh, encryption and decryption starts with the same counter value. Okay, the answer is true. Yeah, consider the counter mode. We are given an abstraction function, counter underscore yank, be a counter mode based encryption scheme. So it takes a key counter in the message. Okay, they set the counter value to be zero at the beginning. That's perfectly fine. Let M1 be a two block message. So it's made of two blocks, M1 and M2. M2 is a one block message. And the K is an encryption key. Let counter yank applies the counter mode based encryption on M1. Okay, so we have here encrypting the message M1 using the key K and the counter. That's not something unusual. What about the next statement? It's asking, is it true that the counter mode with counter plus phi M2 is a secure usage of the counter mode? Okay, let's think about it. We are using the same key, that's perfectly fine counter here and the counter plus five here. So if you look at the structure of the counter mode, you will see that this is a this is a correct usage. It's not a problem. Um, let me show you why. So for the first message M1, we have two blocks. Let's call this as M11 and M12, right? So the counter value become, uh, becomes one. Uh, when we are done with the first message encryption. For the second message, we start with the counter to be five. That means there's no collusion in the counter. Therefore, it's perfectly fine to um, 
say this is a valid usage. Okay, so the answer is this this one is a correct usage from a security point of view. Okay, all right, let's move to the next question. Suppose you are given the counter mode again, and it's the same problem with one small change. Okay, let's see. The change is that we are going to use the same counter value for both calls, but we changed the key, which means it's perfectly fine as well. As long as key counter combination is unique, you're okay. So you can change the key or you can change the counter. That's perfectly fine. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now this problem is related to CBC mode. Suppose you are given a message M1 made of two blocks and uh, you're using CBC mode for encryption. You need to answer uh, the following questions. We are assuming the channel is tamper proof. That means you can um, assume attackers can eavesdrop your channel but not modify the content. Okay. So first part is that ciphertext is made of two blocks. Of course, yes. Um, that's just because of the way the CBC structure is. Because the input message itself is made of two blocks, therefore the output is also made of two blocks. Bob and Alice use the same IV and recover the complete message. Yes, they have to agree on that. Uh, either upfront or through the message itself, IV sent in clear text. Okay. And we already know it's secure against GP attacks. IV has to be sent in. In the case of um, unsynchronized mode, IV has to be sent in public clear text. Okay, that's not a problem. Assuming the channel can only be wiretapped but not tamper. Okay, just to be clear. That is the reason why we say it's also secure against CP attacks. The next final question is that select all that apply. The counter mode has one time patch structure. Let's look at that structure one moment quickly. So when we say one time structure, what we mean is this one, right? This is the one time structure. Uh, you get the unique key when the when the counter value is unique, you get a unique key. And therefore you're doing just one time pad, plain text XORing it with the unique key will give you a cipher text. So it does have one time pad structure. All right. The counter mode leaks the message length. Yeah, it does because of the way we do XOR. Suppose your message is made of only three bytes. Let's say your message is made of only three bytes. Then the cipher text will also be made of three bytes. That's, that's basically what I mean by leaking the length. Okay, let's move on to the next one. The counter mode can be used with the pseudo random permutation. Uh, the answer is yes, because pseudo random permutation is actually a pseudo random function. Although we don't need an invertible uh, block cipher encryption here, this need not be a block cipher. Okay, it can be any ha uh, um, hashed function with a key. Okay, it can be HMAC, for example. Um, it may be slow, but uh, the, we, the reason is that we don't decrypt it. During the decryption process, you can see the cipher text is XOR with the same, um, let me clear this. So this is the key generation part, so to speak. Okay, for, for the plain text XOR with cipher text. If you see, compare against decryption, it's the same, same structure. We don't use any of the reversible properties of the block cipher encryption. In, the, in practice, we often use AES with counter mode. Um, or AES in GCM mode or whatever, but we never use the decryption capability of AES when we use with counter mode because it's just the same forward direction of AES. Okay, so we we apply um, counter to AES, it will produce some random gibberish, and the same we do during the decryption also. Okay, so this can be replaced by uh, HMAC, for example, just uh, just to give give you an idea why I say. Um, PRP is okay, but it's not necessary. Okay, so the answer is yes for that question. All right, let's move on to the next part. The counter mode has one time structure, has leaks, leaks the message length, can be used with the pseudo under permutation. CBC mode can use a PRF. Okay, let's reason about CBC now. If we look at CBC mode structure, look at the way we do uh, decryption and encryption. We need something that allows us to reverse. Okay, meaning you see here blocks of an encryption but we do block cipher decryption. So that means this function, whatever function we use here must be invertible. So for example, AES, that will allow you to do AES inverse. But if you use HMAC, there's no notion of invertible 
ping in HMAC or hashed MAC function. Okay, so for CBC mode, you need a pseudo random permutation. Pseudo random function itself is not enough. This is correct. This is correct. This is correct. This is wrong. So this is correct. That's all. Thank you very much for your attention.